What do you think happens when the proteins are misfolded? In my earlier session, I have talked about integrated stress response, right? Now, in this session, let's talk about unfolded protein response and endoplasmic reticulum stress. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In this session, let's talk about this mechanism where we will look into whether the cell survives or whether the cell dies in response to misfolded proteins. Now, before we understand the misfolded proteins, let us see the normal folding mechanism, normal fo protein folding mechanism in endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Now, the newly synthesized proteins, normally what happens, you know, they enter into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. In the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum, there are chaperones which assist in proper protein folding. The proteins get normal folding, which means you have a normal structure of protein is being formed there and the normally folded proteins, they exit from the endoplasmic reticulum and it performs its normal function. This is how normal protein synthesis and folding takes place. I am trying to oversimplify the complex mechanism here, right? So this is what happens normally. Now, what are the causes of protein misfolding? One, it could be metabolic alterations, could be because of mutations in the proteins or the chaperones, could be because of viral infections, particularly excess viral protein synthesis, could be because of various chemical insults, because of reduced energy stores. Whenever you have ATP depletion, there will be no energy for the proteins to be folded normally, could be because of changes in the intracellular pH or even the redox state, aging is an important mechanism and diseases like plasma cell tumors or insulin resistance, all these are the conditions where the proteins can be misfolded. That means normal folding mechanism is altered. Now, what do we mean by endoplasmic reticulum stress? Okay, what do we mean by misfolded protein accumulation? Basically, when I say endoplasmic reticulum stress, it means the protein folding demand is more than the protein folding capacity. It's a very simple understanding, right? The protein folding capacity is reduced because of various conditions I just listed down, but the demand for protein folding is more, which means the endoplasmic reticulum is more stressed now. Now, which that is the one which leads to accumulation of more and more misfolded proteins in the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. This is endoplasmic reticulum stress. Now, how does this stress identified? The sensing of endoplasmic reticulum stress is by means of various proteins which are present on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum. These are called as sensor proteins. Okay, They detect the misfolded proteins. And once they detect that the proteins are misfolded in the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum, they trigger various signaling cascades into the cytosol, which there are centers which activates something called unfolded protein response. Now, what is this unfolded protein response or the UPR? Okay, unfolded protein response basically falls into two categories. One is adaptive unfolded protein response. And the second one is terminal unfolded protein response. As the name says, one is trying to adapt, another is it's a terminal stage, the trying making the cell to die. Now, what is this adaptive unfolded protein response? When the stress is very mild, when the missed protein load is very small, then you have adaptive protein response where there is increase in the chaperone synthesis. What is the role of chaperone? We just saw, right? It helps in folding of proteins. So there is increased protein degradation via ubiquitin proteasome pathway as well. Along with increased protein synthesis, all those abnormal proteins are degraded by means of ubiquitin proteasome pathway. That And also there is decrease in the overall synthesis of protein. So all these things assist in the cell to adapt to these misfolded proteins. The second one is terminal, okay, basically which means there is restoration of protein homeostasis and the cell survives. The second important response is a terminal unfolded protein response where the stress is very severe and the load of the misfolded protein is very, very large amount, okay. 
what happens in these cases? There is activation of BH3 only proteins. Okay, once these BH3 only proteins are activated and along with that if you have activation of caspases, what are caspases? These are the very important proteases in apoptosis, right? And there is initiation of mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis. All these things happen which results in apoptosis or programmed cell death. Why there is programmed cell death? It is to eliminate these irreversibly damaged cells. Right? So, whenever the protein folding is abnormal, whenever the protein folding is too much, too much and the stress is too much, then it goes for an unfolded protein response. This is all about unfolded protein response, particularly the adaptive one and the terminal unfolded protein response. Now, once we know this, we need to know what are all the diseases which are caused by protein misfolding. Let us talk about the proteins and then the diseases. One, if we talk about the disease cystic fibrosis, the affected protein is CFTR and the mechanism for this disease is loss of chloride transport. The second important one, familial hypercholesterolemia where the affected protein is LDL receptor and the mechanism is defective cholesterol uptake. The third one is Tay-Sachs disease. The affected protein is hexosaminase beta where the mechanism include GM2 ganglioside accumulation in the neurons and the last one is alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency. The affected protein is alpha 1 antitrypsin and the mechanism is apoptosis in the liver and it can also cause emphysema in the lungs. You have one more which is Alzheimer's disease where the affected protein is a beta peptide aggregation of these A beta can result in neuronal apoptosis. So that's a mechanism of neurodegenerative disease, particularly Alzheimer's disease. Now, why do we need to understand the unfolded protein response system or even endoplasmic reticulum stress? Because all the neurodegenerative diseases which we have learned, the Alzheimer's, the prion diseases are because of abnormalities in the unfolded protein response. Viral infections, you have unfolded protein response. Even in diabetes, when there is insulin overproduction, ischemia and hypoxia can result in decreased ATP, increase in misfolding and thereby the cells might either survive or they die by means of programmed cell death. Okay, and the last and the most important thing is that even in cancers, you know, the tumor cell protein overproduction is there and because of this overproduction of tumor cell proteins, you, there is always a possibility of misfolding of proteins. Okay, and then this unfolded protein response has to get activated whether to survive or whether to kill these particular proteins or cells. With this, I have completed another interesting topic called unfolded protein response and endoplasmic reticulum stress. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, please hit on that like button because if you like this video, it will help in reaching to many, many students. I'll come out with few interesting slides and sections in the next session. Thank you very much. Till then, stay tuned. Bye.